and people were sleeping that were sleeping usually until very late and back in the day there was no TV in the morning the TV would start at 12 in the afternoon and there was actually color bars on the TV if I wanted to learn something I would just go to the uh, you know in the room where they would rehearse and I would start figuring out what plug fits where what's the logic of this for the work and I kind of would do pretty well you know instrument by instrument I would just put music and play on top of it, and I just started learning by ear. So when I was 10 years old and I wanted to record a demo, I had to use my logic to figure out how. And I happened, there happened to be two cassette players in different parts of the house, and they both had the option to record in each, you know, each cassette player. I would press record on the cassette player, and I would play a beat on keyboard and then I would play the beat on the cassette where I had recorded it and I would record it into the other cassette so the beat would be playing and now I would put a little piano so it's recording so it's cassette. so there you got two tracks so then and then I would play the two tracks in this cassette player as I was doing a vocal, for example. And like that, obviously, each time you record the song, it starts to be more like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but, but, you know, I figured it out. Nobody taught me or nothing. And that's kind of like, you know, I use logic. Like I try to say, if I want to get here, what do I need to do to get there? And what should be the steps? So I play pretty much every instrument, the basic, but my favorite, favorite thing in the whole world is vocals. 
and I'm a vocalist. I love uh, vocals. I have a very large range, so you're going to realize that sometimes my voice goes up and down because I can sing very low, I can sing super high. Um, I enjoy, you know, I, I'm not being a, a narcissistic talking about myself. I'm just sharing it. So I really, really like um, to sing, but I really like using my my vocals kind of like an instrument. Let me tell you this. My father's name is David LeBon, David LeBon. You're going to have the information down there on the description. His link is there for his page. You can check out his music. He does rock and roll, blues. Uh, he's been playing since 73. Well, I mean, 73, he already had an album out. And uh, since then, he's never stopped. My wife, I'm hungry. So you can say that I was an original black and white baby, and you know, I grew strong lungs. And also, I might have a little bit of a control issue. So let's say if I want to record a single, uh, I want to play the music, and but I also want to, you know, be an engineer and I want to mix it. And why not do a cover? And hey, this cover looks pretty nice, so fuck it. I'm gonna do a video based on this cover, but I wanna film it and edit it. Uh, wow, I made this really cool clothes. I'm actually gonna design my clothes, I'm gonna be my own stylist, and I'm gonna make my hair, makeup, and I am gonna set up the art for the place. And it's like a way of having control over your art, knowing as much as you can. Now, I am not that bad. Like, a control free instance that I like to work alone. But if I have an idea that I want it to be specifically away, then I'd rather do everything myself. Now I love, I love, love, love to do things with other artists. I love to do things with other artists because those are things that come up that just you know that you're never gonna do alone because it's a different experience. So you know whatever comes out, whatever baby comes out of that creation is always going to be something special and different, something that probably I would have not been had the chance to think about because it's coming from different places. Okay guys, so let's just um, move forward and get back to what this is really all about. Um, I want to leave two suggestions. I want to leave two things for people to listen to. Alright, if you like rock and roll in Spanish, write this one down. Actually, I'm kidding. You don't have to write it down because it's all in the description down there. But I want to talk to you about a band. It's from Argentina. I mean, it really doesn't matter what language you speak. And this is the whole point of this, sharing something that maybe you wouldn't have come across. If not, and it's worth for people to listen to because it's really good. So the name of the band is La Mono. So it's a three-man band. They do like rock, hard rock, you know, fusion with metal and it has some reggae in it and uh, blues, funk. I mean, they just play fantastic and they have a really good composition of music. The guitar player, to me, is like a genius. I really, really love the way he, you know, composes and plays. Like, you can tell that he feels like plays. Whatever, I'm, I'm not gonna judge. Just, you know, you be your own judge. The name of the band is La Mona, it's a three member band, and they have two albums out. The first one is called Experimento, was released in 2016, and uh, it has really, really nice songs. Uh, it has a few videos out of that album. The second album came out in 2019, it's called Anomalia, that has a video that actually came out three weeks ago. So that's also going to be down in the description. So you can check them out and um, yeah, the name of the album is Anomaly yeah, and video that's just released. But you have a bunch of videos, so that is a band that I really really want to do with you guys. So, why not since we were talking about Lamono, let me tell you guys that I have released a track with Lamono, so it's Lamono Fitch I am honored, obviously. I'm not hooking up with Lamono because they're my friends. I really fucking love this band. Like, I love this band. And I am honored to tell you that I have a track that came out with them. Fuck what they said. Fuck what they said is La Mono Fits Me, Fits Shitai. We have released this on YouTube. So you can check it out on YouTube. 
um, we have the audio video. It's going to be all in the description. I'm going to make it easier for you. So remember, la mono fits, she tied, fuck what they said. Now this is uh, news, you know, that was sharing. This is news. On the 26th, I am not, I don't want to say for sure that's the date, but this is the date that is planned. On the 26th, for Pride Month, we are releasing fuck what they said first sale on Superify and it's coming out with a video. Yes, the boys and I. And they're backing me up. They back me up, you know what I mean? I don't think there's other band of all straight guys that decided to fit with a trans girl. And they're like, they have balls, you know what I mean? Because, you know, those real men with real balls are the ones that are so secure about who they are. There's no reason for them to be bothered for anything. They're comfortable where they are. It's not the way that I see it, it's the way that it is. It's the way that you saw me go. Anyway, let's continue. So, talking to, talking to who, I want to introduce you to this freaking amazing artist. Her name is Sasha Safia. She's a young, beautiful, trans rapper. She does like trap, rap, uh, reggaeton. She makes her own beats. She has a nice voice. She has really good lyrics, like real, you know, like real. It's not like just pop. Because I've seen trans, you know, girls um, perform or sing. But then, you know, she is like an uh, activist militant and she's also a lesbian. So she's kind of putting, putting that out about, you know, because there's a big confusion and mix, you know, with uh, gender and sexuality and sexual practices all very mixed. And I am going to sit with you guys and like step by step explain the clear difference between one and another and she likes tagging in the streets uh, she puts uh, trans torta which means like trans bag and um, kind of like really putting it out there uh, I don't know I really really like her lyrics a lot of you know things that I can feel identified with she has a very nice voice and melodies and she composes so I really really suggest you guys to go and check it out to see you know Somebody that probably you wouldn't have imagined them doing something like that is doing it and she's doing it very well. I actually discovered her through another Argentinian female rapper. Her name is Sara Heve. Sara Heve. It's also going to be down there. Um, I was just checking on YouTube and I haven't seen anything from her in a long time. And I saw this video. It's called ACAB. A-C-A-B. That's kind of like, you know, like a slang for against cops and against police. So I saw that she was with this girl, and that's the first time that I've ever seen her. And the track is really like, here in the United States, I don't think they were allowed to play it like on, on TV, you know, on the cable. I don't know, maybe they would, but over there is like something that they just play in their league. And the, the chorus of the song quotes in Spanish, no one commits suicide, in the police station. I would get an abortion just in case he becomes a cop. Where there's no power, there's life. And that's just the chorus, the cute part of the song. So, and it's very, done in the, in the hood, it's very street, and it's very real what they're talking about, you know? Talking about, you know, girls getting murdered out there on the street, trying to make a bunch of eat because it's the only way out. Anyway, I recommend you guys to check this girl out. Her name again is Sasha Safia. All the information is going to be down there in the description. And since you're down there in the description, you can go a little to the side and press like. And also, notifications. That way, every time that I put up a video, you will know and you can come and uh, share the, the real time with us. First of all, let's start on the base that I this support for Black Lives Matter. Uh, I think it's a super important subject. I think it's necessary in situations where things get out of control and you can't handle them and it, there is nothing that you can do and people that are not walking your shoes can't see what's happening to you and uh, you are saying it and they're like, really? Are you sure? And they're right there in front of you and they still can't see it. And, you know, I just, like I said, when I do think, I think logically. And I don't think that 
what a racist thing or feels it's logic at all. I think it doesn't make any sense. So naturally it's not even a side that I'm taking. I cannot not be on the side of black lives matter. But if I want to kill someone because of the color of their skin and you know it, it, it just to me it's just not logic so I don't even have to take sides. It's not on me, all I feel is that yeah, black lives matter, of course, like, and there's a lot of things that when you don't walk in other people's shoes, you just don't see it if they're happening right next to you. You know, like, I was a lot with my father, and my father raised me. I grew up, I was little, you know, to listen to Shaka Khan, and to be wonder, and the car limits, you know, like, the first time that my father showed me who was his idol or genius for him it was Jimi Hendrix. So I didn't connect black with that at all. And because of the opposite. Everything that we liked the most musically and that was listened the most musically uh, was black music. You know, like uh, Curry Stone, Jimi Hendrix, Tina uh, Turner, uh, Shaka Khan, um, Parliament, I mean, uh, Stevie Wonder, of course. So, and my mother would listen a lot to Bob Marley and Peter Tosh. Uh, big things like this start changing with the little things that happen sometimes in between these big fights. But I want to ask you guys, you know, with all the hope you understand that you guys are giving me. So when you go back from your fight, which I support 100%, please don't forget not to see two others when you fight the other people. Because that is part of the struggle. Like if you're asking somebody, don't do this, and then you go and you're doing it, you're continuing a situation that just never ends. Um, the fact that you don't understand something doesn't mean that it's wrong or that it has to be exterminated or that it be uh, mistreated, you know. The same way they don't understand you still today and they didn't understand you in the past. You might disagree because gender and color are different. We are born like this and the natural part of our, you know, transitioning it's that we all feel that we need to do it without even anybody telling us what it was, what it is, what it means. Uh, to be sad, let's put it this way, to be segregated by society, you have to in a way be included. Groups of people that are invisible. There's generations of kids that don't know if they can even go into a bathroom. Like when you couldn't sit in the front of the bus, you know? And, um, Every, every single day of my life, one person at least tells me something negative with violent you know, connotation and nobody really you know, is saying about it. They're, they're say th they say things that are like, politically correct and they share a little bit of information, but we don't have a history. We don't have a book that you can read that explains why we are what we are. I am not special. I am exactly just like everybody else, you know? We, even ourselves, there's things that we don't know about ourselves because they have not given us history. So basically, we don't even have a leader. You know, we are invisible. They don't accept people to be in honorable spots socially because they want us to be prostitutes. And it's not that transgender girls are all born with the desire of being prostitutes. We can't eat if we don't go out there and get money because nobody gets the job. So when you think about segregation, you only think about the people that everybody can see and everybody can go and support after. But nobody sees us. So please help us in our fight because we are supposed to be who we are. I'm not in the wrong body. We are supposed to you know, go from one thing to the other. And the fact that we live in different shoes, because I believe that black people should understand better than no one that a lot of people can't see what's happening to them even when they're right there, because they're not in their shoes. 
So this experience of being in one shoe of a gender and then the other shoe of the other gender makes a different gender. That, that alone makes you a different type of gender. You know, um, transitioning from one thing to the other, it's part of what we are. You know, this is something that I've felt my entire life and that a lot of people feel, but people can't be certain because there is no biological book that can explain what's going on. There's, it's not there. It, we're in feeling of this, you know? We can't even, we're so invisible, we can't even, you know, have the term of segregated people. We're just trying to do it. So, I please ask you guys to become allies, to understand that we're living what you live, when you, when you are people in this world when they were serving other people and nobody could say, yeah, this is wrong, you know? No one from all the people that had black people tied up could stand up and say, yeah, we can't do this. Like, there's too many people in this house and not one white person can realize that this is wrong. So this is what's happening to us. And, and we need your support. And minimum, we need your respect. And you don't even need to understand. But not everything in the world is for you and what you don't use might be for somebody else when they were just going to touch the topic and i'm going to help you very simply separate the gender sexuality and sexual practices because now it's like black you know and that creates a lot of confusion like being transgender is not being gay there's a gay transgender and there's straight transgender because it's a gender so a man can be the same, a woman can be the same thing, and transgender can be the same thing. And a man that likes the transgender is not gay because attraction comes to the eyes and you're not looking at them. And whatever you do in the room is called sexual practice. That is not gay, it's what you feel. And you feel attraction for somebody that looks like a man, who looks like a man, moves like a man, talks like a man, doesn't matter if he's feminine or masculine, it's a man. When you see me, you see a family figure, you see what, you know, and most times you say, you know, and I see you, and <clears throat> I'm not even going to go there, but guys, what do you need to support, and uh, to make our life just a little bit easier, to be able to get a job, to be able to like, go to a bar with friends, and, uh, and not be afraid of being embarrassed, with all your straight friends and you're afraid of going through that and you get somebody going in and telling you that you're in the wrong that thing like happened to me a few times for example in Kogyoda Ogden in New York City that I ended up making an entire program talking about what happened two times in this place and um, yeah in New York like you know what so here's the follow I'm asking questions now it's five months and everything to like rethink um, you can talk about the doubts you have, you can be against it, like a racist against a black person, but you don't have the right to exterminate, to disrespect, to get violent, with me or with anybody that has nothing to do with your life, especially if you don't like it. That is proof that has nothing to do with your life. If you don't have nothing to do with it, it's a proof. And the moment that you start engaging, you're already a part of it. Not only you're a part of it, but as money comes and goes, time comes, and when it goes, it's gone, and it's never coming back. So that time that you're using to even listen to me if you hate me, or even write something on the comments, you're already engaging, you're already using time of your life that you could be using to better your own life. You're wasting you know, you're wasting your never come back. The five minutes and then you hate me, you're just not gonna get them back. And maybe in those five minutes your life will change. You never know. I heard the other day somebody say, telling a story and they said that the real revolution is is independence. And each one, each person. When each person realizes that you need to respect the other person to be respected, not only one person but groups of people. And I'm not saying this 
directly to black people at all because I jumped from the Black Lives Matter subject to saying this. I'm talking about everybody because everybody hates somebody. Everybody, if it's the color, the religion, the gender, the sexuality, everybody is hated by somebody. Unfortunately, you know, black people is a lot more political, is a lot more dangerous for shit. If you can love me, you can respect me, or at least respect me. It's gonna, you're gonna see that your fight is gonna start changing for real. Not for next year to have another person murdered. Not even next year, tomorrow. Because they don't give a fuck. Like, we see these things happening, we can't do anything. And when we're tired, we gotta go out in the street and also find answers inside of us to change. Now, we are going to move forward because uh, the next things that we're going to do are going to be a lot more fun and interactive, but now we're kind of like talking about who I am and what this is going to be about. And let's see if you guys want to hit that like. I am not going to say please hit the like because I really need to, you to do this. And No, like if you like this, hit the like. And if you don't like it, it doesn't matter because I'm not doing this for money. I do this because it's a really good way to get to other people. And, uh, and kind of like, like I said before, you know, like, sail the ship together, interact, and, uh, you know, uh, the more you interact, and the more you learn, basically. It's not pointing a specific community or specific people, you know. I am an artist or, an, or a person in general that likes to express, show, uh, share things mostly that we have all in common and making this into a dialogue as well um, being this the most respectful space that we could create for us and there's always going to be always going to be that other side because it's also part of the world but hey you are what you hate what you hate and that's a fact also if you go into my youtube channel that was never a channel. You're gonna find a lot of music that I have done in Band Lab. By the way, shout out to Band Lab and to all the artists in there. They're amazing and it's a really, really good site to go. And um, if you're a musician or you're a creator, it actually has a virtual studio and you can work with artists from all over the world and just create a song together. And that's just like perfection, you know what I mean? You can just meet the musician of your dreams and say, yeah, let's do this song, let's make this, and you make it. So all the songs that I have there are just kind of like homemade, in my case, kitchen song, because <laughs> I sing it made in the kitchen. Most of those songs I sing made in the kitchen, so I don't expect too much, but they're all things that I did in band lab with really cool fucking amazing artists, so you can go and check them out, check the artists, and you can go to band lab and check them out there, and we just put them in the same. So, shout out to everyone, love you.